Hello and welcome to another eMath Instruction Common Core Algebra 1 lesson. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit Number 5, Lesson Number 8, Modeling with Systems of Inequalities. I'd like to remind you that if you'd like to get a copy of the worksheet that goes with this lesson and an accompanying homework, just click on the video's description. As well, don't forget that at the top right-hand corner of all of our worksheets, we have a QR code. That'll allow you to use a mobile phone or a tablet to scan that QR code and bring you right to this video. Anyhow, let's get into a practical problem that involves modeling with systems of inequalities. Let's take a look at exercise one. John mows yards for his father's landscaping business for $10 per hour and also works at a bakery for $15 per hour. He can work at most 52 hours per week during the summer, and he needs to make at least $600 per week to cover his living expenses. All right, let's make sure that we really have all of this down, okay? He's going to work for his landscaping business for $10 per hour, work at a bakery for $15 per hour. He can work at most 52 hours, 52 hours per week. Apparently, I don't care about the word week. <laughs> and he needs to make at least $600 per week to cover his living expenses, at least. Letter A. If John works 14 hours mowing and 30 hours at the bakery, does this satisfy all the problem's constraints, right? Now, there's really two constraints. He can work at most 52 hours, and he needs to make at least $600 per week. So I'd like you to pause the video and see if uh, if that those working hours satisfy all the constraints. Let's take a look. Well, uh, something that's pretty easy. Let's see if he's worked too many hours. So 30 plus 14, right? That gives me 44. He can work at most 52 hours. So that works. Let's see if he made enough money. Let's see. He's going to work... 14 hours mowing, and he's going to get paid $10 an hour to do that. So he's going to make $140 mowing, right? And then he's going to work 30 hours at the bakery um, times $15 an hour. That gives me $450. Okay, add those together, and we're going to have $590 and he needs to make at least 600. So, no. One of the two conditions is met, one of the constraints is met, but not the other one. Well, let's try to model this, okay? Letter B says, if X represents the hours John spends mowing, and Y represents the hours he spends at the bakery, write a system of inequalities that describes this scenario. Well, one thing that's pretty easy is that first condition. When I add x to y, it's got to be less than or equal to 52, right? He can work at most 52 hours. So when I add the hours that he spends mowing to the hours he spends baking, right, then that's got to be less than or equal to 52 hours. Okay, so that's kind of the equivalent of this condition. Now, how about this? Well, x represents the number of hours mowing, so 10 times x will represent the amount of money he makes mowing. Then if I add to that 30, nope, not 30, my mistake. If I add to that 15, right, $15 per hour, times the number of hours he spends at the bakery, that's got to be greater than or equal to 600. Right? This is what's known as a system of inequalities. Right? Letter C says if John must work or walk, apparently, huh, that's not right. If John must work a minimum of 10 hours for his father, Will he be able to make enough money to cover his living expenses? Show the work that leads to your answer. Well, I'd like you to play around with that a little bit. If John must work, not walk, but if John must work 
a minimum of 10 hours for his father, will he be able to make enough money? Play around with that. All right, well, let's see. Um, well, let's, let's see. He's going to work 10 hours for his father, right, times $10 per hour, right? He's going to make $100 just for his father. Right now, how much time does that leave him? Right, well, he can work at most 52, so subtract off the 10 hours he's got to work for his father, he's going to be left 42 hours that he can work at the bakery. Right, so if he takes 42 hours and we multiply that by $15 per hour, all right, what am I going to end up getting? I'm going to end up getting a value that I don't have written down for some reason. Let's do 42 times 15, and we're going to get $630. Well, obviously, that means that we're going to make $730 in this scenario. Now, he's got to make at least $600, right? It's got to be greater than or equal to $600. And so, yes. He does make enough. Okay? So he can work that minimum amount of time that his father needs him to and still make the $600 he needs to as long as he can work the other time at the bakery. All right, we're going to keep working with this problem because it's, it's a very rich one. Um, let me clear out the text. All right, that's all gone. Let's take a look at the next part of the problem. Letter D says, graph the system of inequalities with the help of your calculator, if needed, on the axes below. Use the space below to think about how to graph these lines. So here's that system of inequalities that we had, right? So what we want to do is somehow graph them. Now, at this point, the expectation is you've played around a little bit with graphing systems of inequalities. So one thing I would do is I would immediately put this x on the other side, it would become negative, and I would end up having this. Now, remember, when we graph an inequality, what we do is we first graph the equation that the inequality is based on, which is going to be y equals negative x plus 52. Now, the other equation, that one's going to take us a little more work. So let me, let me put that thing down here. We're going to get 15y is greater than or equal to negative 10x plus 600, divide by 15, divide by 15, divide by 15, all right, and we're going to get y is greater than or equal to, uh, we could reduce the negative 10 fifteenths, it does reduce nicely to negative 2 thirds, all right, and then 600 divided by 15 is 40, okay. So I think I am going to use the calculator right now to help me out because I'm going to have it graph these two lines. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 40 and y equals negative x plus 52. So let's open up the TI-84+. plus. All right. Let's go into y equals. Okay. In y1, I think I'm going to put in the negative x plus 52, and in y2, I'm going to put in negative 2 thirds x plus 40. All right. I have to think a little bit about the window, but remember, um, x represents the hours working um, at, the, uh, the, at mowing. y represents the hours at the bakery. Neither one of them can exceed 52. Probably most of them are, are well short of it. So why don't we go into our window? Let's put x min in as zero. Let's put x max in at, I don't know, let's say 60. Let's do y min, also 50. Or sorry, y min, also zero. <laughs> and let's do y max, also 60. Okay. Once we have them all in, let's hit graph see how they look. All right. 
Now, it's kind of important to remember which one's which. Um, so here we've got the, actually, let me use, um, let me use the prefab line maker here. We'll do the red one and I'm gonna maybe label that. And why not? That'll help. Y equals negative X plus 52. And I think I'll go with a blue line for the other one. This, <laughs> maybe not the best in terms of my spacing. Y equals negative 2 thirds X plus 40. All right. Actually, let me go back to red. Now remember, what I'm really doing is I'm shading y is less than or equal to negative x plus 52. So that's going to be everything down here. All right. y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 40. That's going to be everything above it. Right, so where is the solution to our system of inequalities? Well, it is now this triangular region. Right, right here, it's the overlap, right? Wherever the shading overlaps is the solution to our inequality. So that is the solution to our inequality. Every point within here makes our system true, all right? Satisfies those conditions. Hmm. That was kind of interesting. Move that guy back. Letter E. John's father needs him to work a lot at the landscaping business. Show the point on the graph that corresponds to the greatest number of hours that he can work while still covering his expenses. All right, so it's got to be a point somewhere in here. Um, points out here, right, he's, he's mowing too much, right? Points in here are fine, right? If, I, if I'm in, in here, let's say, like I'm mowing in here, that's all right. So this has got to be it, right? Whatever point that is, is the greatest amount that he can mow while still being in this region. All right. Hmm. Letter F then says algebraically find the greatest number of hours, right, that he can mow, work for his father, and still cover his expenses. So how do we find that point algebraically? Pause the video for a second and think about that. All right. We can find that point algebraically by solving the system of equations, equations, not inequalities, given by these two. So in other words, I can solve for when negative x plus 52 is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 40. All right, uh, hmm, kind of up to you, but I think I'll add a positive x to both sides. All right, that'll leave me with 52 over here. Now, negative 2 thirds plus positive 1 would be a positive 1 third x. Think about that for a second, plus 40. All right, I'm going to rewrite that up here so that we can see it a little bit better. 52 equals 1 third x plus 40. I can now subtract 40 from both sides. And I'll get 12 equals 1 third x. So I could multiply both sides by 3. Sorry about the tight space. And I find that the most that John can possibly mow is 36 hours. So if he mows any more than 36 hours, if he's out here, right, then he cannot make enough money in order to satisfy that condition of, of making $600. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that. Copy down anything you need to.
Okay. Now, sometimes the hardest thing to do with systems of inequalities is simply do the modeling itself. So the next problem, all we're doing is writing down systems of inequalities, but we're not going to solve them. We're not going to graph them. We're not going to find their intersection regions or anything like that. Let's just read. Letter A, Frank is putting together a bouquet of roses and daisies. He wants at least one rose. That's important. Anytime you see things like at least, underline it. He wants at least one rose and at least two more daisies than roses. Okay. Roses cost $4 each. Daisies cost $2 each. Frank must spend $40 or less on this bouquet. If R represents the number of roses he buys and D represents the number of daisies, write the system. Okay, well let's try to convert that at least one rose. That's pretty easy. So the number of roses, R, must be greater than or equal to one, right? Okay, he wants at least two more daisies than roses. So the number of roses, the number of daisies he's gonna have is going to be at least, it's going to be greater than or equal to the number of roses he has plus two, right? Two more, two more daisies than roses. Take the roses, add two, get the daisies, right? Now, how do we do that last piece? Frank must spend $40 or less. Well, let's calculate how much he's going to spend. $4 times the number of roses is how much he's going to spend in roses, plus $2 times the number of daisies, how much he spends in daisies, must be less than or equal to $40. Okay. There's our system of inequalities. Nobody said you could only have two, right? And we've got three. Let's take a look at one that has something to do with a, a diet bar. Letter B. A diet food company is attempting to create a non-carb brownie, yum, um, composed entirely of fat and protein. The brownie must weigh at least 10 grams. So it's got to weigh at least 10 grams, but have no more, no more than 100 calories. It's got to have 100 calories or less. Fat has 9 calories per gram. Protein has 4 calories per gram. If X represents the weight in grams of protein, so X is the protein, and Y is the fat, we're going to write the system. All right, well, it's got to weigh at least 10 grams. All right, so if we take the weight in protein and the weight in fat and add them together, that's got to be at least greater than or equal to 10 grams. It's got to be greater than or equal to 10 grams. But it can't have more than 100 calories. Well, how would we get the calories? Well, we'd take 9 calories per gram of fat and we'd multiply its weight in fat. Let's see, what was its weight in fat? Ah, that's, that's Y, right? And then we'd take 4 calories per gram for the protein and multiply it by how many grams of protein we have, which is X, and that's got to be less than or equal to 100. All right, so only two inequalities this time, but still a system. Okay. All right, I'm going to clear these out. Let's take a look at the last problem. All right, exercise number three. A drama club at a local high school is trying to raise money by putting on a play. They have only 500 seats in the auditorium that they are using and are selling tickets for these seats at $5 per child's ticket and $10 per adult ticket. They must sell at least $2,000 worth of tickets to cover their expenses. All right, so that's an important constraint, at least $2,000 worth of tickets. What do we have? X represents the children's tickets. Y represents the number of adult tickets sold. Write a system of inequalities that models this situation. All right, well, we have only 500 seats, so we can't sell more than that. So if we take the number of children's tickets, 
add to it the number of adult tickets, that's got to be less than or equal to 500. We can't sell more than what we have. But we have to make $2,000. So if we take $5, which is the cost of a child's ticket, and we multiply it by how many child's tickets we have, then we add to that, let's see, what is it? $10 per ticket times the number of adult tickets we have, which is Y, that's got to be at least $2,000. So there's our system of inequalities. Right? Letter B, using technology, sketch the region in the coordinate plane that represents solutions to this system of inequalities. All right, well, it's kind of like what we did before. Um, let's take that first inequality. Let's move the x to the other side. It's going to become negative there. So it's going to be negative x plus 500, right? Uh, likewise, the other one, a little more work. We're going to get 10y. It's greater than or equal to negative 5x plus 2,000. All right, I can divide everything by 10. And we'll get y is greater than or equal to. You could reduce that. That becomes negative 1 half, or you could leave it. This then, I think it is, it's advantageous to reduce it. 200. That's very helpful to have our system of inequalities kind of rearranged like this. Because now we can put the equation y equals negative x plus 500. And y equals negative 1 half x plus 200 into our calculators. So I'm going to open up the TI-84 plus now. All right, it's all open. Let's go into y equals. Okay, we're going to clear out our two equations from before. Okay, in y1 I'm going to put in negative x plus 500. In y2 I'll put in negative 1 half times x plus 200. Okay. Uh, let's go into our window. Now remember, we're talking about the children's tickets and the adult tickets, so again, there's at most 500 tickets. We don't need to make our axes any bigger than 500. We'll go a little bit bigger just to, to fit everything. But let's do uh, x min 0, x max, eh, let's go 600 again. Why not? y min, let's go 0. And y max, let's go 600 again. And now let's hit graph. Okay. Now again, I want to graph and I want to do some shading at the same time. So let's again go with like sort of two different colors. Let's start off with um, blue. Yeah, looks good. We'll do the first one with that. So. And let's come up with its equation, y equals negative x plus 500. Now, of course, what we've got is everything less than this. I'm not going to shade anything down here because it's th these are non-viable solutions down here. Let's now change our line to red. <clears throat> All right. And our other one kind of looks like this. And then that's y is greater than. Well, let me let me throw the equation on first. Um, we'll put it up here. It's oops. <laughs> it's color coded. So y equals negative one half x plus two hundred. But now we're shading above because it's y is greater than. All right, so our viable region again, um, maybe I'll outline that in this screen. Our viable region is this. All right, that's our solution set. Ugh. <laughs> All right. That's our solution set, okay? Now, letter C says, 
if the students want to sell exactly 500 tickets and make exactly $2,000, how many of each ticket should they sell? Why is this answer not realistic? Okay, so at this point, you know, we want to have exactly 500 tickets sold and we want to make exactly $2,000. So let's solve this system now of equations. And let's do it by the, the method of elimination. Remember the method of elimination? Right? To do the method of elimination, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to eliminate either x or y. All right, I think I'll eliminate x. And I'll do that by multiplying both sides of this equation by negative 5. And right? that'll give me negative 5x minus 5y equals negative 2,500. Then my other equation, I'm not going to change, 5x plus 10y is equal to 2,000. When I add these together, the x's eliminate. I end up getting 5y equals negative 500. Divide both sides by 5, and I get y equals negative 100. Now, of course, that's not realistic because we can't sell can't sell a negative amount of tickets. It's a non-viable solution. Can't sell a negative amount. Just can't do it. All right. So I'm going to clear out all of this, and then we'll wrap it up. Great. So systems of inequalities actually show up a lot in the real world. Um, they oftentimes serve as constraints in engineering problems or economic problems. Just being able to write the system is actually quite helpful, uh, apart from graphing it and thinking about viable solutions and things like that. Um, so that's where a lot of the practice will come on both the homework, um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it tested as well. All right. Well, until next time, let me remind you that this has been an eMath Instruction Common Core, whoops, Common Core Algebra 1 lesson. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, assuming that I can keep the camera on me, keep thinking, and keep solving problems.